Hello, boys and girls, and everything between and beyond. My name is V, and welcome back to Cemetery Mary. Which, uh, yeah, I had to make a rough cut, cause this game, uh, cause uh, I didn't want to stop in the in the recording. So uh, let's just go go back from where we uh, left off the, in the last episode. Let's see, cracked door, I uh, thought crystal knob maybe? I approached the door that ha have had a crystal knob on it. None of the other doors I had passed had something like this. It must have led to a special room. Grab the uh, knob of the door. The crystal felt cool on my hand. Turn the knob. But it wouldn't open. Tried again, but still would not open. Decided to just give up on it. Didn't want to force it open. Besides, if it was locked, that probably meant it wasn't supposed to I wasn't supposed to be there anyways. Cracked the door then. Approach the door with a large crack across uh, across the front. I went to go reach for the knob. Ah, there is none. It looks like it has fallen off some time ago. I tried to push the door, but it wouldn't budge. I leaned over and peered into the hole where the knob should be. Nothing. Whether it's too dark to see anything. Oh well. Ah, your door? I looked towards the door at the end of the hall. It was slightly ajar. I walked over to it and opened it all the way. I looked inside the room. It was a bookshelf with hardly any books. A worn down cozy chair to sit and, re and breathe, breathe them in. But no ghost. Closed the door all the way this time and left it alone. I kept looking but the place seemed completely empty. What was I going to do? Surely I'll be oh I'll be waking up soon. And when I did, I'm sure the others would be expecting to hear what I found. Should I just make up a story of the ghosts I met here? I mean, they wouldn't know the difference if I did, right? Seems like that'd be my only option until... Footsteps. There was some someone here after all. I heard them run away from my direction. Wait, come back! I followed after them. The direction they ran to led me to a door. When I opened it, there was a staircase behind it, leading upwards into what looked like an attic door. Climb. Well, there's only one thing to do here. I climbed up the stairs, opened the attic soul door. Upon reaching the top, I was confronted with another open doorway. Light was leaking through it. There was a window up here. I walked closer, turned the corner, and then... Take them down. I have to. Whoever you are. I took a step forward. Wait, uh, boo! Stumbled backwards and fell onto the floor. 
<laughs> Dude. That was so fucking funny. Oh my god. You should have seen the look on your face right now. Got you so good, dude. Sniff. Oh. I started to uh, to sob. Ball. Quite loudly. And embarrassingly. Sapphire tried to talk to me, but I was too wrapped up in my own tears. I heard heavy thumbs and and faint. Hey, what's going on? I asked Crow and feared oh found a way up to the attic to meet us. When they saw me. Both of them seemed shocked and upset. And quickly diverted attention to Safara. Hey, 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 what the fuck happened? What the hell did you do, Safara? Uh, it, it, it wasn't even anything. I just pretended to hang from a noose. Gave her a little spook uh, when she got close. She's the one who's making a big deal of it. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Not cool, dude. <laughs> that wasn't the prank we agreed upon, asshole. <laughs> you think you can just do whatever the fuck you want? <laughs> yeah, I do. Because I can. Ugh. This shit's fucking stupid. I didn't do anything that bad. <laughs> Bullshit, you didn't do anything that bad. <laughs> Too fucking far, Sap. Uh, whatever. D do you want me to say I'm sorry? Leave me alone. Mary, wait! I ran out of the attic. In fact, I ran all the way out the house. And kept running down the street until I get back to the more familiar areas of the city. Tears blurred my vision, but I kept running. I think I was being fueled by my emotions at this point. I was so... I didn't want to think of any, any of them. Enough is enough. I tried so hard to be nice. To be polite. To be their friend. But it was clear to me eh, that that could never happen. I could never be friends with people like this. People like... And to think Crowvin continues to be friends with them. It's no wonder he's been so mean to me lately. And as all this was going on in my head, I still kept running. And running. And running. And running. Until... I'm... Bumped into somebody. Whoa, is everything alright? That voice. Reynold. Uh, are you okay? Huh? Oh. Sorry, I'll get out of your way. Well, well wait just a minute now. You seems awfully worked up. Da, 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 da. What happened? No, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Da, 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 da. No, not worried. Da, 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 da. Look at you. Da, 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 da. You're a mess. Da, 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 da. Ah, sorry. That was probably... That probably wasn't the right word choice, but... Da, 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 da. You clearly... Are you very distressed? Da, 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 da. Do you want to talk about it? No, it's fine. I... I'll just go home. Da, da, da. Mary? Da, 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 da. Da, 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 Would you come with me? Huh? Why? I was actually on my way to this little place that calms me down. Da, 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 da. But I think you could use a trip there, too. I don't trust this. Oh, no, that's okay. 
Please, you... Please, you really don't have to worry. I'll be fine. I would feel a lot better if you came with me. Yeah, I don't trust this. Please? Alright, I'll come with you. Reynard gave me a soft smile after I said it. Thank you. I very much appreciate the company. Come, follow me. Even though he said follow me, Reynard grabbed me by my wrist and began to guide me down the sidewalk. I was a bit confused on the direction we were going though. It's this way? I didn't think there was much of anything on this road. Well, it's a bit of a secret. But that's part of what I like about it. If it gets too popular, then it ruined the very peaceful atmosphere they have. I think it's better if less people know. But I think I can trust you not to tell anyone about it. Uh, alright. I keep walking with him and eventually we reach a more desolate area of the city. Still don't like this. Still don't trust this. There was no one walking the streets. And all the windows of the building where it started to pass were all dark. No one had any of the lights on. There were no cars on the streets either. It was strangely barren around here. Say, what streets are we on again? Are you sure we're going the right direction? Yes, no need to worry. We're almost there. Okay. Then at a certain point... Uh, Reynold stopped walking. He looked down into a dark alley. And then walked into it. <laughs> well, are you coming? I, uh... I felt pretty weird about walking down into an alley. With no one around. On a street I'm unfamiliar with. But he was waiting there for me. I would have walked away. I would definitely have walked away. I'm gonna walk away. Given the recent events, I was going to say that I would be heading home instead. But Reynald popped out from the alleyway once again and said, <laughs> What are you waiting for? Da, 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 da. It's this way. He grabbed me by my wrist again and pulled me inside. Brought me to a door with a shining golden handle. It looked brand new amidst the grime of the alleyway. He raised a f finger to his lips and said, Shh. Then I opened the door. Oh my. It was a, ah, it's one of those places. And it was adorable. Pretty string lights were hanging from the walls and ceiling. And calm music played throughout. There were decorations of intricate uh, tapestries and an addition of some rugs to soften the hard concrete floor. There were very few people, and they hardly made any noise as they spoke. As if they were in a library or trying not to disturb anybody else. Not to mention the aroma. Even if I don't like coffee, I can't deny how pleasant the smell is. All of it together felt magical. See? 
told you it was nice. This place seems so delightful. However, did you discover it? <laughs> That's a secret. But maybe I'll tell you one day. A step further into the building. Which uh, Reginald that closed the door behind us. Then I followed him to the counter. He asked what I wanted. Oh, don't worry, I can pay for myself. No, no, please. I insist. Consider it a thank you for accompanying me. Are you really sure? Positive. Jane, I'll order himself a coffee. And I ask for hot, hot chocolate for myself. I felt a little silly ordering it, but the barista didn't seem to care at all. Even when I ask for marsh marshmallows. <laughs> oh, that's cute. After we got our drinks, Virginia and I plumped down on an empty couch in the building. You got a styrofoam cup? Paper, actually. Uh, no worries, it's recyclable. I think the uh, mugs they offer here are cute and better for the environment. But, well, how do I put it? I'm just particular about using the same things that other people. I'm just particular about using the same things as other people, that's all. Uh, I knew there was a reason why I didn't like him. I believe that they even allow. I believe they even allow you to bring your own mug, but that's a little silly, isn't it? To bring a mug from home, because it just would still need to, to. Because I would still need to wash it afterwards. Now, and I'd look absolutely absurd carrying a mug down the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, you got a point there. Anyways. Are you feeling any better? Oh, who? Me? Yeah, I guess so. I'm not crying anymore, so that's a good thing. I think... Thank you again for bringing me here. No need to thank me. I'm just glad you're feeling better. But if it's okay to ask about now... What have gotten you so upset in the first place? Well... I guess it's okay to talk about. Especially since you wouldn't notice people anyways. Where do I start though? Well, I, I spent a lot of time with my kind cousin and uh, recently met his other friends. I told them all about what happened since I first met them. I don't know why. It was like I had to start with one thing, but then led into another thing too. I told him about how intim intimidating they were when I met them, and about how they dis this respect the this cemetery and about the incident that happened with them yesterday already I was trying to block it from memory Reynold in this and the nodding along as I talked it felt nice to have someone listening to me and then I ran into you on the sidewalk now we're here I guess Sorry for going on like that. <laughs> I just wasn't sure where to begin. Or end. Why are you apologizing? I'm actually very happy you told me. It's not good to always let things weigh on you. You know, Mary, I must admit. I'm not at all a violent person. 
Oh, I wish I could teach those those thoughts a lesson right now. Yeah, right. Much talk. Where do they get our thinking that kind of behavior? Where do they get our thinking and that kind of behavior is alright? No, no, it's okay. I just won't hang around them anymore. But at least I tried, right? That's all you can do in this life. Uh, uh, the more this, the, uh, this person talks, the least I like him. Try. But yes. Don't worry about people like that. They clearly can't, appre can't appreciate a good thing even when it's right in front of them. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. And it means a lot to me too. Just then I received a text message. I l took out my phone. Croven had messaged me. Mary, where'd you go? You're not at the cemetery. At least I don't see you here. Actually, I put my phone away without responding to him. Reynal, are you busy? Hmm? No, not really. I was planning to run a few errands, but nothing that needs my immediate attention. Why do you ask? Can I come al- Oh no, don't say we have to spend more time with this guy. You want to run errands with me? Yeah. Don't really feel like going home. At least, not right now. Well, if you're certain, you're more than welcome to come along. Uh, I would more than appreciate the uh, company. Thank you again. Spent the rest of the day helping Wengnald with his errands. It wasn't anything too big. He brought some stuff from the hardware store, things he need for a bit of a DIY car repair, wrenches, screwdrivers, antifreeze, oils, but nothing too big to carry. I also helped him pick up a few groceries. He was running low on milk and eggs. But he picked up some strawberries too, before they got out of season. It wasn't anything too exciting, but it was nice to be able to do something simple with him. And enjoying... Uh, enjoy... Uh, com completing these simple tasks. With someone who wasn't trying to tick, tick me or to, trying to trick me or make me cry. Before we knew it, it started to get dark. To ignore I out to get going. Get home safely then, alright? Promise him I would. And then I went to catch the next bus home. Well, at least my day wasn't completely bad. Or at least that's what I thought initially. But once I made it home and opened the door to the cabin, Someone was waiting for me there, or someone was waiting there for me, and he was not happy. But fucking time you got home. Where the hell were you? You didn't answer any of my fucking texts. Of course I didn't. I... I'm mad at you. You're mad at me? I'm the one who's supposed to be mad here. Do you have any fucking day what could have happened to you? It can't be any worse than what your friends did to me. Uh, is this real out? What this is about? Get the fuck over it, Mary. Uh, 
Uh, well, they were planning to prank us. You all just wanted to make fun. Uh, seriously? Not like I can fucking control every little thing they do. You should, you should know how they are by now. Besides, what they do is uh, my fucking fault. So I, I don't know why the fuck you're getting so fucking mad at me. Because you let them do it. You, you never say anything. Maybe they stop if if you didn't keep them. Maybe they stop if you didn't keep letting it happen. Hey, don't stop turning this back on me. Well, she got a point. Maybe if you weren't such a sensitive crybaby, wouldn't have wouldn't be having this problem. But she is, and you know that. There you go, making fun of me again. Don't you have anything better to do? Oh, give me a goddamn break. You know, maybe that's why you're so mean to me late. Huh? Come again? Fuck is that supposed to mean? Hang around such awful people. No wonder you become such a bad person. Oh really? Now? That's how you feel? Yeah, it's definitely how I feel. I don't know what... I don't know what point... I... Don't know... I don't know at what point you stop. But you definitely aren't, aren't a good person anymore. I don't know who this person is. But the Croven I... No, would never been so cruel. Croven, you know? Ain't that rich? Let me tell you something. The crewman you knew died with uh, all the fucking cru crovosums. Croven? You can't say that. I'm so fucking over this already. If you really hate me uh, that much, why are you even still here? I can't believe this shit. Then maybe I should just leave, if that's how you feel. Maybe you should. And take all your stupid fucking baggage with you. Coming strong go off after that. I went the other way and marched upstairs. I felt like crying all over again. But I think I used up all my tears for the day. Was going to text the number again. Because, well, it's what I always do before I go to bed. But when I opened my phone, I was surprised to see I had a few messages from someone else. It was. Twa uh, Twayla. I hadn't really seen her since that night at the club. Hey, Mary. I know it's late, so don't blame me if you are already in bed. But I figure I ask ask you anyway, since it's not overly time sensitive. I'm going to be at the library tomorrow, looking for anything I can find that might help with town's little problem. I figure you could come and help me. Hey, research, if you're up for it. Yeah, I can come here. But that's a real, I think that's a really great idea. I'll be sure to be the first thing tomorrow. Well, I don't know if I'll be there that early. But I'll be, sh uh, I'll be sure to see you there. I had agreed to meet with Twi uh, Twyla. Maybe part of me did it in spite of Crowen, but it would be a nice distraction, I think. Distraction from all the bad stuff that happened today. 
and wouldn't have to think about it tomorrow. When I got up the next morning, I heard myself out of the house. I wasn't even sure if Crowen was still home. But I wasn't going to stick around long enough to find out. I headed to the library as quick as I could that morning. And even though Tyla said she wasn't going to be around so early, she was still there when I arrived. Twyla, are you already here? Oh, hi. Yeah, I'm here. I thought you said you wouldn't be here so early. Uh, I don't think it's super early. But that's not the point. You're here to help me with research, right? Oh yeah, of course. Just tell me uh, what I need to do. I'm going to need you to fetch some books for me. Viola handed me a list of books she need. I worked in the library before, so I know where, so I know they're here. I just want you to pick up a pick a few up from uh, from the starters. All right, I think I can do that. Uh, yeah, I sh, sh, uh, sh, I sure I should sure hope so. Took Troilus list and began to grab the books for her. There were a few psychology books, but also some filled with like periodicals. Is that how you describe it? I don't know. But what I did know was that if I keep carrying so many books at once, I topple over. It's happened before. I began to hand them over to Twyla. She seemed very focused uh, as she took the books from me. Sometimes when I hand, hand her a book, she slides oh, one over to me with the pages open. I would close it and go return it on the proper shelf. So I left a few books that I realized she was prob probably anticipating I read the passage she had op opened to. Oh well. Can I just continue fetching her books and shelving them back again abs abs absent mindedly? It just seems like the best thing for me to do, to be able to help. I doubt I would understand information as well as she did. I am, well, not the brightest at times. I can relate to that. You're distracted. Uh, am I? You certainly seem a bit out of it. Is everything all right? Well, I uh, I had a fight with a friend last night, and we still haven't made up. I see. Well, that's not going to help us here. Huh? If you want to help, you're going to have to pull yourself together. You know, the issues we're dealing with here is much more serious than whatever dumb fight you and your friend had, right? I... I guess... Uh, yeah, sorry. Are you going to be like this the whole time? I... I don't know. You can leave. Huh? Are you sure? I thought you needed my help. Clearly, you aren't going to be any help to me like this. I like her a lot more than the other guy. Oh, don't take it so harshly. I'm doing you a favor, if anything. I'll call you up uh, again next time I need you for something. Just remember not to... Oh, forget about all of this. Okay. Okay. Sorry I couldn't be of more help. It's fine. See you later. See you. 
I left less of the books on the table for her and then headed out of the library. Mm. I wasn't much help at all, was I? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, what the fuck? Crowell? What the fuck were you doing in there with her? Didn't I tell you to stay away from her? What, did you just like, not listen? Or not care? You're just trying to piss me off at this point, aren't you? I'm, I'm trying to help her with something. Not like it's end of your business in the first place. <laughs> Excuse me? That girl is definitely my business. Especially if she's talking to you. What's so bad about her? Yeah, but we haven't really got an explanation for that. You can't just tell me to do something and not explain why. Why not? You don't trust me anymore, huh? Yeah. I guess it's just as well. Let me tell you this. Either you stay the fuck away from her, or stay the fuck away from me. Comments stomp past me after that. Didn't apologize when his shoulder bumped into mine. He just kept walking. I hope that whatever he, uh, he was going, it wasn't home. Because that was the only place I wanted to be right now. Even if it, it seemed like he preferred I not to be there anymore. I want to ask you something. You always do, don't you? Please. Apologies isn't was... Apologies. It wasn't meant to appear a sarcastic word. Go on. Do you know who I'm... How do you mean? Like... Do you know about other people connected to me? And if you do... Are you coming from them too? Please? Yes. Wait. Yes to which question? I'm sorry. I have to go. Good night, Mary. Days passed. As days often do. Things in the house have become have been incredibly tense. I can't even recall the last time I physically spoke to Croven. Maybe it was the day at the library. I don't know. I really don't remember. It was like I don't see him at all. But when we do see one another, we don't talk. It's really awkward. Sometimes when we find ourselves in the same room, one or both of us will just leave. We don't say good morning or good night. And if I see him on the streets, he looks away. I wish things weren't like this. I just really want things to go back to normal. Back before... I really want things to be better. I want... Well, he's like he is actually one that needs to apologize, in my opinion. Well, we should probably also apologize to just to not just send a text to say to say we're fine, and I think both did wrong. I've both have things to apologize for. So let's be the bigger person and apologize first. I should, shouldn't I? 
No Krell uh, has been having a hard time lately. I am sure you haven't been making things much. Uh, sh I and I'm sure I haven't making f making things much easier for him. It's partly my fault, anyways. His friends don't have to be my friends too. And even if he wanted me to get along with them, I should have stopped anyway when I realized it wasn't going to work. I'll try to tell him that sometime soon. When I know how and when to properly say it. I sat in the living room f for the remainder of the day. At least until dinner time, that is. Fire was on and I was reading, but I knew I would have to start cooking something soon. Then, then I heard Croven come in through the front door. Still not feeling comfortable being in the same room as him, I got up to move into the next room. When? Huh? Mary? You know I love you, right? Like even when I'm mad or yelling. I promise I don't mean it. I really, really don't mean it. Yeah, I, I know. I love you too. Um, are you okay? No. Theodore died. Oh, Crow. I turned around to hug Crowven properly this time. I didn't ask him what happened. He didn't seem to be in the mood to talk about it. And I don't think I was either. I helped him prepare the service. Or perhaps it's more apt to say that I prepared the service because he asked me to. You're so passionate about it. He told me. So I know you make sure he has the best one. It was just... I don't know if passionate is the right word. I hoped it was a nice service. I'd like to think that it was. I did try my best to pull it all together after all. I got lots of flowers and a nice spot for him to rest. Croven was responsible for inviting everyone. But everyone wasn't a lot of people. I wasn't sure if it was because no one wanted to attend, or it was because Theo only had this many friends. I looked around. Safara wasn't here. Eventually everyone began to leave. But again, everyone wasn't that many people. Before I knew it, it was just me, Crowven, and Theo. Wordlessly, Crowven sat beside Theo's freshly dug grave. I did the same. Normally, I enjoy funerals. Or perhaps it's better to say I appreciate them for what they are. But this one was hard to appreciate. I couldn't find a trace of pleasantness in it. Not even a little bit. It just felt sad. Groven. Hmm. 
Is there anything more I can do? You've you've done enough. Right. Kroven. I don't want to upset you. But if it's okay. I want to try talking to him. Mary. This isn't a time for that ridiculous shit. I'm being serious. I promise you that it works. I've never been bad at my pro I've never been bad on my promises before, have I? Please, just give me a chance. Fine. If you're so insistent, then go ahead. But when you wake up, I want you to tell me something that only they would know. Because if you can't, I really don't want to hear about this ever again. I understand. But I won't let you down. I lay down on top of Theodore's grave. I could see Crowen wins as I did. Hopefully, it wouldn't. It would be over. With, it would be all over with quickly. And hopefully, Theo, be in the mood to talk to me. Look around. It's completely dark. I can't see a thing. Listen. It sounds like faint static. But if I don't focus on it, it like it disappears. Take a whiff. It smells like uh something smoky. I feel like I'm laying on something. But am I laying on the ground? But I am laying on the ground, right? Feels weird though. Can't really describe it. Hmm. Hello? Is anyone there? I don't understand why I can't see anything. Of all the times, I think to start going wrong. Well, maybe if it helped if you took that lamp shape off your head. Huh? Your... Theo! <laughs> Hi, doll face. <laughs> Long time no see. Oh, Theo. I'm... So glad to see you're right. You sh you sure that's the word you want to use? I well, <laughs> I suppose you're right. Still, it seems like you're okay. Wherever this is, where is this? This? This is wh where me and uh, Sapar live. At least it used to be back when I was live with you all. Oh. You lived here? Hey now. I know it ain't the prettiest. But it gets the job done. I suppose so. Seems like the most logical conclusion to make. Close your eyes, things go black. Then you wake up somewhere completely different. Not really a lot, a lot of ways you can go from that. Oh, while you're here. I guess I want to say I'm sorry. I kinda figured that whole ghost talking thing of yours was a bunch of bullshit. But I can admit that I've been proven wrong. 
Oh, that's... that's okay. I mean, I think I'm more sorry for you in this situation. How did this happen? Well, it's all of this. If I knew exactly, I probably wouldn't be in this situation. <laughs> I suppose you have a point. If I had to guess, though, it was probably because I drank too much. Oh. Yeah, you see. It was Crow, Sap, and I, and we were hailing a. And we were shill, all shilling, right? <laughs> Having a few drinks, laugh, laughing all ra around. <laughs> How we're so past, and I'm f not feeling so well. <laughs> like I had a headache before, but now I'm feeling nauseous on top of it. <laughs> I'll tell I'm gonna run to the bathroom, and I do. <laughs> Fucking puking up everything I ever ingested, I tell you. I start coming out of the bedroom and man, I do I feel not great. Trying trying to call over to Sap and Crow, but it's like they could barely get get my words out. And I figured I'm gonna be down for the count. I at least don't want to be somewhere lame like in front of the man's bathroom door. <laughs> so I scramble over to the pool table, drop the game of whatever of whoever there was and lie down on top of it. <laughs> Next thing I knew, I woke up here. And you knew you were dead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't explain how, but <laughs> You just know. I see. So... How long are you staying here for anyways? Oh, uh... Not sure, actually. I could wake up in a minute uh, now, now that I think about it. Which reminds me. I promise, Chrome, that uh, when I wake up, uh, I tell you something that only you would know. It's proof that I've talked to you. So do you have something to you can tell me? Yeah, I got a few stories between Crow, Crow and I. Pick your poison. Orange juice story. That sounds interesting. The orange juice story? Oh boy. Hmm. How do I even start with this one? Well, I mean... A candlestick was something hanging with like spiked orange juice or something. Oh, no. no. Honestly, you probably wish. Huh? Okay, so it's like. <laughs> Have you ever made s orange juice come out of someone else's face? I. What? Okay, so. Red we're at the beach, summertime, chilling, whatever. Crow decides he's gonna hang out under umbrella. That's fine, that's cool. I go play with Sap in the ocean a little bit. Come back down to the broadwalk to get myself a soda, yada yada. I see Crow coming up from behind, still sitting under the umbrella. I decide I'm gonna be an asshole and scare him. I come up from behind and slap my hand into the back of his shoulders. And... And, and what I didn't realize that Corvin had been drinking some sort of orange juice or some shit. And when I scared him, he fucking chugged it right out. I'm talking hack. Hacking like I'm talking orange juice all over his chest, but like it didn't came out his mouth, came out his nose too, and also a bit screwed out his eyes. Ow, ow, ow. I don't like imagining that. Oh, don't worry, it gets worse. He grabs some soda. 
uh, out of my hand, thinking it's water to rinse his eyes out with it. <laughs> Pours directly into his eyes. Oh my god. Was he okay? <laughs> I mean, yeah, eventually. <laughs> he bit down Alan. He bit his own arm to keep from swearing in front of all those kids at the beach. And Sapphire never knew the story? <laughs> ah, by the time she came back, Coven was all taken care of. I didn't really feel like talking about it. I'm sure if you asked him to uh, retell the story today, though, he laughed. Probably. I see. Thank you for telling me. Hell yeah, dude. It was a great day. Oh, and uh, one more thing before you head uh, head back. Say hi to Safar too. And go ease on her for me, okay? Listen. No, she seems like all firecrackers and dynamite. Maybe even a little rough around the edges. Oh, yeah? But she got a lot going on deep down. And I know she appreciates some help with that. I appreciate it too. I see. I, I'll try to talk to her next time I see her. And I'll let her know you said hi too. Oh, please do. I'm excited to see my boys again soon, but... I'm hoping it'd be a long wait at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I hope so too. Before I knew it, I was out again. And I woke up to the sound of a worried Coven. Yo, Mars, come on. It's getting late. And it looks like it's gonna rain soon. And... Crowen? Yeah? You poured soda in your eyes. Is that the real reason why they were redder than usual? It's a beautiful day today. And after much talk of rain, I had even brought my umbrella. But it was clear I wouldn't wouldn't be needing it. The sun felt so warm, so much brighter today. I hope we would get more sunny days like this before things start to get cold and cloudy again. Because right now, just felt so refreshing. I was on my way to the cemetery once more. I didn't have any flowers this time around, but I was sure that was okay. I brought a teddy bear last time after all. Besides, now I have a different method of of being able to visit everyone there. I try to visit Theo too when I'm, I'm able. I don't want to bother him too much. And even though he and I aren't best friends or anything, I can tell he appreciates it. I think I'll try to see him again today. I continued down the sidewalk, admiring all the things that looked so much happier in the sunlight. The birds, the flowers, the trees. But one thing that didn't that didn't was making it but one thing that didn't was making it way towards me. And I didn't even realize until I heard her snap my name. Oh, Twyla. Funny running into you here, huh? I see you out and enjoying the sun. I haven't heard a lot from you, you know. 
Eh, yeah. But, like, but, like, likewise, you know? Hmm. But I've been investig invest investigating on my own time. Do I, do I need to remind you that you're the one who offered to help me and not the other way around? Uh... There are way to start. Why didn't you message me then? Incom incom incompetence is not an excuse. Uh, I'm sorry, Twyla. I just... I don't think I can help you anymore. Excuse me? Huh? Not help me anymore? You haven't helped me once. And now you got uh, a girl to back out before you even started? What's that for, huh? Well, it's just... Just what? Uh, let's just... I'm not cut out for this. P please understand. I'm really sorry, Twyla. I just... I'm not cut out for this. Even just help you in the library, I couldn't do much. I, I could pro couldn't possibly drag you or your investigation down. I, I don't think I would be much help at all. Should have just told you earlier. I'm sorry. D do you understand? Oh, I understand. Y you do? Yeah, I do. Get it perfectly clear. Why bother helping me catch a threat? When it could help fill up the precious cemetery you love so much. Whoa, what? Hold on. That's not true. I never risk someone else's life for that. Yeah, I'm sure you wouldn't. This is... Like I was sure you would help me. I apologize for lashing out, sir. I'm just l running low on patience. You might not know it, but I tolerate a lot of bullshit from a lot of people. But one thing I refuse to tolerate is people who don't keep their promises. So go on then. Run to your little cemetery, Mary. I'll let you go. But I make sh but I make sure you keep that promise eventually. Twyla angrily he brushes past me after that. I felt hurt, to say the least. Hearing that she thought hearing, hearing what she thought of me. But I couldn't help her anymore. And it had come out and it had to come out eventually. At the very least it was something that I got over that got over with. And I couldn't let it ruin today. I wiped my eyes of any tears and tried to regain my composure. I tried to focus on the nice things around me as I continued on my way. The birds, the flowers, the trees. The birds, the flowers, the trees. I couldn't let it get to me. She didn't know the truth like I did. And I couldn't keep Faye waiting. I continued on and up the way. Entering the cemetery, something felt off. And I didn't know why until I started approaching Theo's gravesite. Someone's there at the gravesite. Is that. Ah, oh, hey! Wait! I followed them as they ran from me. They got out of my sight quickly, but. 
I was determined to find them. I walked up and down the aisles, trying to keep an eye and ears open. Until eventually, I began to hear something. Followed the noise which led me to a tree, and... Safara? What are you doing here? I took a seat beside Safara, patting down the grass as I did so. She wiped her eyes on her sleeve as I sat. Hi, Mary. Hi, Safara. I'm... Are you alright? Yeah, why wouldn't I be? Don't I look fine? You, uh... You stay right. Huh? I'm okay. I'm okay. Really, I... I'm, I'm sorry. I was just leaving. Don't worry about it. The far up. I, um... I was surprised that you... Well... What? You... Didn't show up at his funeral and all. I couldn't. Why not? You didn't want me here anymore. After that incident, I promised you I would, I would respect your boundaries. But I guess I broke that promise anyway, huh? I wanted to leave before you saw me, at least. So far, I... I'm sorry if I made you feel that way. No one should ever be prevented from seeing their loved ones. It's fine. I had already upset you enough. It's just... Nothing's been the same now that he's gone. And I'm not sure it ever will. Still feels so unreal. I just... I walked into our place and I'm ready to stalk like... I don't know. Hitting him with my jacket sleeve or stealing his hat or, and running away with it. And now when I come home... It's all by myself. There's... But all this stuff still smells like him. Smells ya just like before we left for the bar. His smug is still in the sink because he said he would wash it later. And his hamper is still full because we were going to do laundry together. And the TV remote still stuck in the couch because that's where he l last left it. He was my best friend. And he's totally gone now. And I'm never going to get him back. I'm never going to get him back. I'm never going to see him again. That's... That's not true. I promise you one day you will see him again. But not in this life. Isn't that right? I don't know what to do anymore. I don't feel like myself. At least, not without him. I'm all alone. You're not alone. I'm... I haven't talked to Crowen since. Really? I don't even know what I say. Oh, what it will feel like. The three of us were always together when we hang out. It feels unfair without him. It feels wrong. It will be it will get better with time. I promise you it does. 
Maybe it won't always be the same, but it will be better. And Safara, you're not alone. I know Croven would want to hear from you. And I really think you two should see each other. Even if it is awkward. You should know that... Croven is here for you, and I am too. Even if... Even if I didn't always think you were the best person. That's... Just because we don't get along doesn't mean I can't help you through this. So... Thank you, Mary. I could really use that support right now. Yeah, of course. It's going to get better. I promise. I've got another question for you. I thought you might. Have you ever lost anyone? Why do you ask? Just want to see. Of course I lost people. I don't think there's anyone alive who hasn't lost someone. Yeah, that's probably true. I probably lost more than you could fathom. How did you feel? It always starts the same. It begins with devastation. But over time those feelings... You get used to them. It's like a blur. Stop worrying about who died. Start worrying about who's next. There is no rest. So you become someone who doesn't need rest. Because it's... It isn't going to stop. You just have to be ready for the next time. That sounds hard heartbreaking. It was. And it's why I'm fighting so hard. So that you... Don't wind up like me. It's been a few days. Despite what happened at the funeral, Coven hasn't really left his room. When I wake up in the morning, I can hear him stomping around his room. And when I return from having left the cabin, I find no evidence that he has left the cabin at all, let alone his room. I'm so used to him going out every day. But now I feel like I'm leaving him home alone. He spends most of the day holed up in his room, door shut tight. I knock on it every now and again to shake on him. But there is not much I hear from him outside of that. But today is door open. And I think I should shake on him. His door had been opened just a crack, but I opened it just a bit more to get a better look inside. He was sitting atop his bed. Without even turning to face me, I heard him say, I know you're there, Mary. Come on in. Stepped inside and took a seat on the end of his bed. He didn't seem to have much of a reaction. It's getting a bit late. I'll probably start dinner soon. Sounds good. You really shouldn't be smoking inside, you know. It's a lollipop. Ah, I see. Um... I 
like your dear plush. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I haven't seen it before. Is it reason? Yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The person you met, Vas. Yeah, 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 yeah. They won. They won it at that time we were met at the arcade. Yeah, 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 yeah. Said they had no room for it and insisted that I have it. I hope you don't mind that I didn't give this one to you. No, I know you like collecting toys, but... Oh, no, no. I totally get it. I don't even worry about it. It's a bit lower to the ground, um, though, don't you think? <laughs> eh, it's fine. <laughs> Besides, if it falls down, I don't have to worry about having to get a chair or anything to put it back up again. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Alright then. Not sure a hamper's getting full. Money's getting a bit full too. Maybe we can do laundry together soon. Mm, yeah. That's probably a good idea. It's strange though. I feel like you I just did laundry and now I have to do it again. It's not like I even wear that many outfits. Yeah, me neither. Alright, let's stop beating around the bush. What do you mean? Come on. You and I both know you didn't come here to talk about my laundry or my posters in my room. Here because everything sucks right now and you think we should talk about it. It's not so bad. That's a lie and you know it. Stop trying to convince ourselves that everything is okay. <laughs> when we both know uh, that's the farthest thing from the truth right now. I know things have been very hard lately. But I just don't know what to do. Are you sure you don't want to see a therapist? It's really normal to see one and after loss, you know. It doesn't have to be a forever thing either. But maybe for the short term? I don't want to think about it right now. Thanks for the consideration, but it's really not what I want to hear right now. I'm fine. Yeah, right. You aren't fine. And. I'm not fine either. I don't want this cycle to continue. Where all we do is feel miserable. Again. And again. There we are. I just want anything to go back. That isn't possible. It's never going to be normal again. None of this shit is ever going to feel normal. Sure, maybe it pass. But that's not going to make f things feel normal. Nothing will. Then how can you just keep going like that? Saying that you're fine when that's not true. And just settling for it. Because it's not like I have any other choice, Mary. And that's the truth for most people. You just don't get it. I know you're worried about my own parents. I know there's a shitload of stress uh, on your shoulders, too. But at least you have some fucking hope in that situation. What hope do I have? My parents are dead. One of my best friends is dead. There's no way around either of those facts. And I'm never going to see either of them again. And 
Yeah, sure, maybe you can talk to them. But that doesn't mean that I can see them, or be around them, or do any of the same thing I used to do with them. It's like, why fucking try? If everyone I get close to is gonna die right in front of me, then why bother trying to do anything about it? Whether I'm happy or sad or whatever doesn't matter. Because it doesn't change the life I'm living right now. That's why everything is fine. That's why I have no choice but to be fine. I know that you want to help, but all these solutions, therapy, relaxing at home, whatever, they aren't going to change anything. They aren't going to bring anyone back. Don't you understand that? Better than anyone. I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound like a dick when I say this, but... Your parents might come back one day. Mine sure won't. You can't... St yeah, that's true. You can't stop living. I'm not. At least I'm not trying to. I think that's obvious. Even though it might not be a parent to you. I know what I'm doing with my life. And I'm definitely not stopping it. But it doesn't feel like how it should. This isn't how things were supposed to be. No one could have predicted this. I could have. I should have told them not to risk going out that night. I should have done a lot of things. But it's too late now. I don't think you should be thinking like that. Then how else should I be thinking? Listen. I know I'm not always the brightest girl. But if there's one thing I, n I know about its loss... Here we go. Please screw them. Right. Sorry for cutting you off. When I attended those funerals... I met a lot of people who are feeling the same way that you are. They're stricken with grief. It doesn't matter who died. And the way they express their grief isn't always the same. Some people can't help but to sob. Others seem to stare in disbelief. Like if they wake up soon, they, they realize it was all just a terrible dream. And some of them simply talk to everyone around them as if, it, as if nothing is the matter. But you can tell they'd rather be seeing their loved ones in different circumstances. I don't see these people for a very long... Well, I don't see these people for very long when I'm there. But I know that all of those people have been getting better since that very day. It's why we have funerals. To start the healing process with closure. But despite its name, closure is just the first step. I know that everyone deals with loss differently. But I know that grief won't last forever. And I know that processing it doesn't have to be so miserable either. So please, let me try to help you. Maybe if, together, we can acknowledge and embrace the circumstances we're in. It'd be easier to get past them. But what if I don't want to? Through them. Move on from it. 
get past it. Isn't that just the same as forgetting? The reason why I go to all those funerals. The reason why we set all those graves. Isn't that because you don't want to be forgotten about? How hypocritical of you. Wanting to remember strangers, but f forgetting the ones we care most about. It's not forgetting. Croven. Just because their gun doesn't mean we're going to forget them. You're right in what you said. I've, I don't want anyone to feel forgotten about. It's why I visit them. But feeling better about it isn't forgetting. Wanting to live a sap wanting to live a happy life isn't forgetting. I mean, do you think my parents would want this for you? Do you think your parents would want this for you? That Feo would want this for you. You can't be afraid of what's happened when the griefing is over. Feeling doesn't mean... Feeling better doesn't mean you forget how much you miss them. It just means you won't feel less sad when you remember them. Mary. Yeah? You know I love you, right, Mary? Yes, I know. No, 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 you don't. Come here. Moj me over with a lazy hog like gesture, and I sco scooched over to him. Do you know the reason why we started staying here? This old piece of shit cabin? No? I was always curious, but... Fud might be rude to ask. It's because... Cruel. I wanted to be closer to you guys. That's the only reason. You're joking. That's crazy. That's such a nice home in Halin, Halin City. Hey now, you know what all those old folks say about the difference between a house and a home? I know I've been an asshole. And I probably won't stop feeling like one for a while. I can't really explain all my feelings right now. But while we're here, while you're here, I just want to say, I've lost, I've having lost so many people. I'm just glad I haven't lost you yet. Yeah, I'm glad I haven't lost you either. Yeah. Look what you made me do. <laughs> you know I hate all that uh, dumb sappy shit. And you got me over monologuing it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I hate candied Mars. Blech. That, was so, that was so sappy. I, I could put it on you, your morning pancakes. <laughs> hey! Don't let it happen again. I won't. I won't. <laughs> Aww. Please leave my family alone. That's not possible. We're... we're getting better. And if my parents were still... I'd feel almost like I did before. I'm afraid I cannot give you the same life you once had. But I can assure you things will be better. After this all... How can you make it better? I can't explain it. 
At least not now. But whether you believe it or not, it will get there. And so will I. This is for you. And you'll see that soon. Good night, Mary. Good night. Thank you. It's been a few days since then. Coven seems to be doing a little better than usual. I think he's really trying extra hard right now. And he's been seeing Safar again too. I think that's nice. I think that's good for them. I'm happy to see them having a nice time together again. I had a nice day myself actually. Sometimes it's nice to just return to the cemetery for a normal day after so much chaos. I made sure I put at least one flower on every grave today. Though I haven't talked to any of them. I had considered doing it but like others tell me, it's probably not a good idea to fall asleep in a pub in public places. Especially if there's a killer on the loose. So I decided I wouldn't do it that today. But that's not what happened though. I truthfully didn't mean to fall asleep. I didn't. But when I sit back against the mausoleum we have being outside all and on my feet all day. Well, I was just so tired. Didn't even realize I fell asleep. Until I woke up to the sound of rain. I was surprised to not have had a strange dream this time, but this was a big problem. Only the a uh, roof trim of the mausoleum kept me safe from the rain. And it was pouring. And worse even still. It was night. The only light that I could see was from street lamps at the outside of the cemetery. Oh dear. How could I have slept s so long? Well, I couldn't stay hidden under here all night. I took a big breath and ran across the cemetery to the street. Luckily the gates wasn't locked. Again, I was surprised but thankful as it meant I would ha have to find some other way out. Once I was on the sidewalk I noticed street lights were, street lights were the only lights on. Everything else seemed closed. How late was it? I didn't want to pull my phone out to sh uh, the rain to check, but by any means I had most definitely missed the last bus back home. I wasn't sure or, or what I was going to do, but I had to find shelter first. I ran through the rain to find anything that was open. It wasn't long before I felt my shoes filling with water. It get, it gets, I'd get a cold out here, uh, I'd get a cold out here too long, and the rain showed, showed no signs of letting up. But I knew there just had to be something, anything, open. And eventually I made it somewhere. It was the movie theater. Thank goodness. I washed myself aside and took a seat beside the posters, waiting to dry off and taking my phone out. Just as I suspected, it was pretty late. And knowing the usual time of the cinema, it, I could tell it was going to be, it wasn't going to be open much longer. What do I do? Even though I wasn't sure. Oh, how he could help him. He helped me right now. I had to at least try calling up Crowen. Why isn't he picking up? Yeah, yeah. Mary? 
Oh, you picked up. Thank goodness. I was starting to get worried. Um, I'm having a bit of a problem right now. What is it? Well, uh, you see, I, I kind of fell asleep in the cemetery. And I only woke up a few minutes ago. And it's raining really bad right now, and I missed the bus, so... I don't know, I was hoping maybe you could help me out somehow? Uh, no can do, Mario Mo. Didn't I tell you? Tell me what? Mary, I'm not even home right now. Not, I'm not even close. Huh? Where are you? I'm, like, out of the fucking city right now, Mary. I had these plans with these friends. It doesn't matter. I swear I told you. Well, I don't remember. Look, don't lie, miss. There's no way I can help you from here. What am I supposed to do, then? Fuck, Mary, I don't know. I heard this frustra frustrated sign through the phone. I couldn't see it, but I could tell he was finishing the fridge of his nose. Where are you right now? I'm at the movie theater, but I think it's closer soon. Alright, well, do you have anywhere else you could... Uh, do you have anyone else you could call up? Maybe stay with them tonight. I mean, I guess so. Awesome, great, sounds good then. Look, Mars, I really gotta go, okay? Call up, call up one of your other friends. I'm sure one of them will come get come get you. Alright, good. I heard a click of Crone hanging up the phone. Call up one of my, my other friends. Well, there's only two of those. Who should I go with? <sighs> to be honest, I am gonna go with. I don't think she's gonna help me, cause she's kind of a bitch. But I trust her far more than uh, Reynald. <phone rings> Call up Twyla. Heard the phone ring a few times, then she picked up. S sounded angry, although she didn't sound like she was asleep before I called her. <laughs> Mary? <laughs> what are you calling me for? Don't you know what time it is? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's kind of my problem. It's a long story, kinda, but... I miss my bus home and I need a place to stay, to stay tonight. I was hoping maybe... Are you serious? After all the bullshit you put me through? Yeah? Yeah, fine. But there's not gonna be any fucking nonsense, alright? And you paying back, back big time f uh, for all I had to put up, up with with you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Of course. I understand. Uh, I don't think you do. But I'm coming anyways, so you better be ready. I am, I am. Promise. While I arrived at the movie theater to pick me up, I felt embarrassed having to ask her to come get me. Especially after I was... Uh, I was convinced that I probably wouldn't... Uh, uh, even see her again. I couldn't uh, make myself look small enough as I crawled into the passenger seat of the car. She was full dressed, but I couldn't tell if she changed out of pyjamas just to pick me up. She seemed very annoyed picking me up, so I made sure to thank her profusely for her kindness. She didn't respond at all. The drive to her house was silent, except for the rain. Luckily, there wasn't really anybody else on the roads tonight. And we got to her house safely. 
even though it was terribly dark outside. I could see that her house was gigantic, to say the least. I felt a bit intimidated as we climbed up the many steps to her front door. A car... Uh, it, what car did we drive, drive here in again? Even though I knew I wouldn't be able to see it in the dark and rain, couldn't help to try to look back towards, towards it and see what, see if it, see if it was something expensive. <laughs> Don't fuck around, you'll trip, dumbass. I snapped my head, head back to the front and continued following her up, up the stairs, careful not to let the rain. No, rain make it all the more slippery. When we got to her front door, I was so relieved to just be in somewhere warm and dry again. But Twyla didn't offer me moments of rest as she grabbed my wrist and dragged me through her house. Before I knew it, I was in her room and she was digging through her dresser. Before I could even proceed uh, the space I was in, Thyla threw a pair of pajamas at me and barked. <laughs> There's a bedroom down the hall. Get changed. And I followed suit. Though, I do wish she gave me permission to use the shower. Going to bed with some icky rain or on f uh, feeling is less than ideal. But I suppose I shouldn't complain. She's doing me a favor after all. The clothes she gave me seems to fit well. We were around the same size after all. After getting changed I returned down onto the hall and to her room. I'm glad I was at least able to remember what room it was. I knocked before entering. When I did, I saw the lights were already off and Tyler was wearing pajamas of her own. She was sitting in her bed, only being illuminated by the light from the laptop that she, she sat in her, well, lap. She didn't even seem to acknowledge me as I entered. Despite the darkness, I was able to make out the shape of a blanket on the floor that wasn't there before. I guess uh, the I guess that's where I'm sleeping. <laughs> Let's just stay quiet. Hey. If you're not going to sleep right away, I want to ask you something. Oh, yeah, sure. You can't. You say you can't help me because you've been so busy helping someone else lately. Busy with what exactly? Who is it? Oh, I. Uh, I don't think I should say. Is it Croven? Perhaps I could. I could have lied and said it wasn't, but I recalled in surprise when she said it and definitely got the message across. Thought so. I... How did, did you know? I don't think I can think of anyone alive that hates me as much as that boy does. I'm sorry, I tried to hide it from you. Why did you? Just that... Croven, um, well, he has such a strong distaste for you. I didn't know if you would react the same way towards him. Hmm. No. I know how I have my bounds of anger, but I'm much more mature than to react like that. Do you hate him also? I don't even know how you two know each other. It's complicated. I don't need to get into that mess right now. We don't need to get into that mess right now. 
I see. Thank you again for letting me stay. Hmm. Aren't you tired? Why don't you go to sleep? I'll be sleeping shortly too. They have some business I need to take care of. Alright, yeah. Good night. I lay down and try and try to get to bed. Despite a hard floor and Twyla's clacking away on her keyboard, I did manage to get to sleep, eventually. When I woke up in the morning, Twyla wasn't in her bed. In fact, it was even neatly made. I stood up and looked around. When I did, I saw a note left uh, on her, her bedroom door. Couldn't help but to read it in Twyla's voice. Mary. I'm not really comfortable leaving you alone in my house, but I I don't have, have any other choice. I'm going to... I've got something important. I've got, I've got to be prepared for and had to leave early. S Still, you seem like the kind of person who would feel bad going against someone else's wishes in their own house. Which is why I'm using this to my advantage. When you away when you wake up, collect your belongings and leave at your earliest convenience. Thank you, Twyla. I see. It's not like she's wrong. Expecting wishes I uh, I got changed into my normal clothes and left her folded neatly in her upstairs bathroom. Then I headed downstairs and then walked out the front door. I was still amazed by the size of her house. I never knew she had this much money. But maybe that was the intention. Regardless, it didn't affect me anymore as I made my way off a property, searching for the next bus stop to use to head home. Or at least somewhere where I could get some breakfast. I'm hungry. Proven's been pretty anxious lately. He would never admit it. But it's easy to tell. He's home almost all the time. But never relaxed. He's always pacing, itching, double checking. He almost always looks at his phone. Sometimes I see him go outside to talk on, on said phone. He yells at whoever it is on the other's other end. Even from inside I can hear it. Inside. He's been asking me to stay in, inside a lot lately too. He sounds like my parents did back when this all started. I don't know why he asks me. But I do it anyways. Because when, eh, whatever it is, it's making him worry himself sick. And I'm not going to add uh, to that stress. I just wish you would tell me what's going on with. But I'm not gonna push either. I'll let him tell me on his own time. So as expected, I've been home all day. I haven't done much, though I'd like to change that soon. If I'm staying home anyways, I might as well be productive about it, right? Maybe get a little cleaning done tomorrow? Clean home is a happy home and may help take some of the stress away. I just finished washing my face and brushing my teeth for tonight. I was about to change into pajamas and settle into bed when I received a phone call. So late at night. 
I reached over to my phone to check who it was. Twyla? That... The Twyla would... Would be mad at me still. Why is she calling? Maybe she wants to cash in those favors I owe her. But so late at night. Decided to pick up anyway. Mary? Twyla? She sounded like she was out of breath. Mary, thank goodness you answered. Please, I need your help. Huh? What are you talking about? Are you okay? I am. For right now. Please, I need you to come get me. You're the only person I can rely on for this. I don't understand. What's happening? I don't have time to explain. My phone is my phone is on low battery. I don't know how much longer it lasts. But I'm in trouble and I need your help. Trouble? Why why didn't you call an emergency number? I can't. It may it make things worse. You have to believe me, please. I know I haven't been the easiest on you. But I'm really relying on you right now. Okay, okay. I I think I can still catch a bus. Uh, where are you right now? Do you remember when we we met in the bathroom of the club? Yeah, I do. I'm near that building. I'm I'm hiding in one of those uh, alleys. Uh, ally, please hurry and find me. And whatever you do, do not go to the police. From Twyla? Twyla? Phone must, phone must have run out of battery. I... I have to go find her. Crowley was asleep in his bed when I answered the phone. Even though I didn't really want... Even though he didn't really want me to leave the house, this... This was clearly an emergency. I had to go. I quietly slipped out of the house, making my way towards the bus stop. I hoped on the first bus that came and silently prayed that it did that I, it didn't come too late. We were off to the city once again. Twyla sounded really bad. Like it was hard for her to breathe. Is she really okay? She told me not to contact the police or anything like that. But how am I supposed to help her? I don't understand. If she doesn't want the police involved, I guess it's not something that they're supposed to know about. Is it okay for me to get involved with them? I hope I wasn't making a mistake. There was hardly anyone walking amongst the streets street tonight. Tonight, in fact, I think I may have only seen one other person out out here tonight. It was eerily quiet. I had to find Twyla. Per her instruction, I made it towards that hidden club building. I just hope she was still there. I checked between each crack and alley I could find, until... Twyla? Mary, what happened? Are you okay? Your head is bleeding. And your shirt. There's blood all over it. I'm, I'm fine. She coughed. She sounded hoarse. D don't be so loud, okay? I tried to quiet my voice, but it was difficult with the sight before me. How did this happen? I was attacked. Huh? By who? I don't know. I didn't see them. I was just trying to investigate. And suddenly something stuck, struck me in the head. I'm lucky I, it didn't knock me out cold. 
somehow managed to get away, but I'm scared they're still looking for me. I, I shouldn't have gone alone. Twyla, I... We should call someone. No, please don't. That's more trouble than it's worth. And I don't think... think... I'm in any shape to be interrogated right now. But please... I just called you. Tell me to get to the hospital. My car... isn't far. But my leg, I think it's twisted. I can make... I can't make it... it there on my own. You want me to do? Drive you then? Oh, no, I think I can do it. I just can't do it alone. Please, help me get to the hospital. Yeah, of course, I will. Come on, let's get you out of here. I kneeled over to help Thyla Thi Thi up. She threw her arm around my shoulder for support. Right as we turned and out of the alley. Tyla fell to the ground beside me. In complete shock, I turned to the source of the noise, only to be met with an even bigger shock. <laughs> How fucking stupid do you take me for? Crowen? <laughs> Mary? <laughs> We're leaving. What? I shot her in the leg. She survived. Well, she might bleed out because you have a lot of arteries in the leg. So, I think that you can just shoot someone in the leg and they'll be fine is not really accurate. But you... But you... You won't if you leave with her. Huh? She's trying to trick you. She's really good at it too. But maybe if she were better at it, I wouldn't have been here to stop her. I don't understand. What's going on? I explain it later. But we need to go. Now. I... This is all too much. You just shot somebody. I didn't even know you had a gun. There's no time for this. I don't think so. How fucking stupid do you take me for, huh? Do you think that's enough to in incapitate me? I couldn't get any words out. I didn't know what was happening. All I know was that Twyla's arm was locked around my neck. And I felt the cold touch of a met of metal brush across my face. Now, unless you think you're a real fuck fucking lucky shot, I'd put that gun right down right now. You. you gotta be fucking kidding me. Did you go deaf? Put that gun down or she'll lose a fucking eye. You shut up. Twilight choked me hard. What's this gonna uh, be, asshole? Do you like your chances? I'm just gonna stay silent. I put the gun down. Just leave her out of this, okay? She has nothing to do with any of it. On the contrary, she's got everything to do with it. Corvin put the gun on the ground. Twyla plushed the knife closer to my face. I felt its teethy lightly press into my skin. Corwin's eyes grew wider as she understood what was 
what she was getting at. She held up his hand by his head, defenseless, and took a few steps back. Frayla quickly drew the knife from my face. I'm as glad she didn't manage to scratch me in the process. She then removed her arm from my neck. Didn't realize how tight she had actually been choking me until she let go. Grasped for air and almost tumbled over. I stood as still as I could as Twyla walked over and picked up Crovan's gun. Thanks for agreeing to come help me, Mary. I really do appreciate it. She's aiming it in Crowan's direction. You were a very big help. And then pointed it towards me. Don't you dare. If you do, I ain't telling you shit. I wasn't going to. Twala walked over to me again. She lifted the gun above my head. Mary? I'm sorry. I was out. Yoo-hoo! Can you hear me? Ma Mary? Yoo-hoo! Safara? But where am I? Where's Croven? I was going to ask you the same thing. Croven went missing. Twyla did too. Or at least... She, or at least she's very good at hiding. It's been weeks since that night. I have not seen or heard from either of them. Supposedly, Safara found me because Kroven messaged her and told her to come get me. And she did hear from him again after that. I went to the police, even though I knew Kroven didn't like them. They were the only people left I could think that might help me. But just like my parents, it's turning up with nothing. No clues, no evidence. As if they had suddenly vanished. Safar has been trying to help me look. I had thought that maybe we were starting to get along. We were starting to get along before. But it didn't seem that way anymore. She didn't like talking to me. I can see it. I can feel it. Her messages are short. We never meet f for more than an hour at a time. She always got somewhere to be. She's mad at me. I know she is. Uh, can I blame her? It's like I took her last friend away. And mine too. It's all my fault. If only. I should have listened to Kroven. Maybe then none of this would have happened. It's like... Everything that had been happening came to a sudden halt. Twyla was gone. Kroven was gone. Even the Mr. Number stopped responding to me. Was this really it? Was this really the end? I still live in that cabin. I've got nowhere else to go. I try not to bother Croven's room too much. 
It still smells like him when I walk past. And I'm sure he, you know, comes back. He wouldn't want to see his room a mess. Try not to bother it too much. But sometimes I just can't help myself. I walk in. His hamper still has a shirt sleeve hanging off the side. His pillow is still lopsided on his bed. His curtains are still drawn. I walk over to his bed. I lie down and try not to cry. Congratulations, let's complete a road of Cemetery Mary. Thank you for playing, but do you think you can get a true ending if you try again? Maybe, but that's for you who's watching to uh, try. And I will definitely try this, either I might do another recording of this in the future, I might do a live stream. Or I might just play it on my own. But yeah, Arcade Kitten. Wonderful game. Uh, I'm kind of a bit surprised that it was uh, a like text based adventure, since uh, all other games I play from you have been like RPGs. But I approve of your decision to make it one. I think uh, make, making it up on RPG and just have like the walking section might have t taken away a bit from it. But yeah, I would give this a 10 out of a 10, of a, a 10 out of a 10 as for, uh, for a game. Uh, yeah, it was much longer than I thought it would be which I as and considering how good it was I just see that as a good thing and but I am so tired because it's currently 9 in the morning and I've been and I've been recording because I thought this would be like a two to two hour long game at least it said it would. And apparently it's uh, close to a five hour long game. Which be like this is a free game. Like I would gladly have paid money for this. But yeah, but yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, it's early in the morning. I have not slept yet. I am rambling out, uh, around. So, amazing game. Link down in the description if you wanted to try to get uh, the ending yourself. And, yeah, Arcade Kitten, if you, you see this, you are awesome. And, yeah, like all props to you for making this and everyone that's uh, been like involved in making this so yeah with all that said thank you so much for watching if you like like subscribe and all that jazz if you want to help me out share this video and watch some of my other videos uh, i have plenty on my channel and have a good whatever it is where you are and i will see you in the next stream or video Bye-bye.